So there are two, two parts to this question. Um, first of all, we want to talk about the actual virology of these, these, these three diseases. Because, um, and secondly, we'll go on to the sy symptoms after that. So the common cold, you know, you know it's, it's common, but it's actually caused by many different viruses, not a single virus. You know, you might assume that it's just one virus, but actually 40% um, of the common cold are caused by what we call rhinoviruses. Um, another 20% are caused by parainfluenza viruses, another 28% by coronaviruses. And I said, what is it, what, coronaviruses? Yeah, there are actually, coronavirus is actually very common. You know, this, the one that we're dealing with is a novel one. We've never seen it before. But actually, it's widespread in the community, and it's actually a very common cause. You may have already had coronavirus. I may have already had it. But it actually makes up 20% of the common cold. There's, there's seven or eight, many, there are many, many different types of coronaviruses, but most of them are very harmless. And, but they can give you the common cold. Um, and then another 20% are miscellaneous viruses, such as RSV. Um, so, so it tells you that it, it, there's not just one virus that causes c common cold. Many different, there are actually lots. The most common is the rhinovirus. Going on to the flu, the flu is caused by a different virus as well, the influenza virus. And influenza virus itself is divided into different types of viruses. Not all influenza viruses are the same. So you actually have influenza A, B, C, and D. You could pretty much forget about C and D because D is pretty much, doesn't affect humans, it mainly deals with cattle. C does affect humans occasionally, but it's very rare, so we don't really have to worry about that. So A and B are the ones that are the most common types of flu that, that give us the flu. Um, but even between A and B, there's a vast difference in the sense that the flu, just like coronavirus, can, can cause a pandemic. Um, but the only virus out of the flu viruses that can cause pandemic is the type A virus, is the type A influenza. So type A influenza is the only virus that can give you pandemic. And I'll explain that a little bit later, just why, why that's the case. And, and the A virus, the type, the influenza A, um, it, it's also divided into many subtypes. You might have heard many, you know, maybe a decade ago about H1N1, right? H1, you, you probably all heard of H1N1 from the swine, swine flu, okay? So what, what, is, what, what, what kind of makes, how, does, how are these, uh, these subtypes divided? Basically because they have, the way we divide them is because they have two proteins, like, you know, when you say H1N1, what does that mean? The H is a protein and the N is a protein. They're on the surface of the, of, of the virus itself. And there are many different types of H. H stands for hemagglutinin. N stands for neuraminidase, and um, there are different types, and they give the they, they they make up different types of viruses. So you get H1N1 is a is is one type of influenza A virus. Then you can have H7N9. You know there are different numbers and combinations, but H1N1 is very famous because it's the same virus that also caused the 1918 Spanish flu. Okay, and in 2009 it caused the swine flu. Okay, so, so the, 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 the question is, how, does, how do these pandemics occur? And why is only the, a, the, the, the influenza A virus the only one that can cause a pandemic? And it really comes down to a very basic virologic um, you know, phenomena of, of, of what we call mutations. And there are two types of mutations. One is, that, one is called antigenic drift an antigenic shift. Okay, what, 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 I'm just going to very briefly mention that because this, is, ex, this explains why pandemics can occur. Antigenic drift is basically when the, the, uh, the RNA has very minor mutations, very minor changes, like what we call point mutations. And so what happens is that the, the H and, and N proteins can change in very small ways. And that's why you have to the virus changes every year, and that's why you have to have a flu shot every year, because the virus changes a little bit, not too much. Every year it modifies, and that's why, you know, you have to change the vaccine every year a little bit, 
And that's why we have to have the, uh, a different vaccine every year, just minor modification. And this, this anti antigenic drift, you know, minor point mutations, is happening all the time, okay? And, and, but what happens in a pandemic is what we call something, uh, another type of mutation called an anti antigenic shift. That's a major change. And, and in the last, what happens there is that you just don't have little point uh, changes, but you have big chunks of, of the gene being cut away and replaced. And usually it happens when our, the, 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 the human flu virus gets in contact with an animal virus, okay? It can be a pig, swine, bird, you know? And, and when, when, the, when, the, when the parts of that animal virus combines with the human virus, that's when you have major genetic shifts. That's what we call an antigenic shift. And that's what causes pandemics. Because then what happens is that the, the H and N proteins are then are completely new. There, there's nothing that the human being has anywhere in the world has ever recognized. And, and when you have a, a completely new virus, you know, due to these major antigenic shifts caused by these animal uh, uh, influenza viruses, and, and they, they can spread from human to human, and nobody in the world is immune to them, that, that's, what set, that's what causes a pandemic. And the influenza virus, in the last 100 years, there's been four pandemics. 1918, flu, Spanish flu, 1957, 1968, and then 2009 uh, was the swine flu. The swine flu is actually, the H1N1 is made up of, um, of, of, gen, of genes from the uh, American pigs, the European and Asian pigs, um, birds, and human. So it's made up of four components, you know? That, and, 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 you know, nobody was actually, nobody was immune to it. So whoever it infected, you know, they got sick. But fortunately, it, it didn't last too long. But, but it, it was... Uh, it, it, was a, it was a very, it gave us a scare. I remember in 2009 when everyone was afraid of that. Um, so quick, and then finishing off with the COVID virus is basically, it's, it's a coronavirus. As I mentioned, there's many coronaviruses, but this is a novel coronavirus. It's something happened. We don't really know the, the exact origins of how this derived. People are saying it came from, most likely it came from animals, whether it's bats or you know, um, some market in China, Wuhan. Nobody really, know, really knows for sure, but some major genetic change took place um, that no human being on the earth was immune to, and then it spread very quickly. There are other, the reason why it's called SARS-CoV-2, because there was a SARS-CoV-1 back in 2003, you know, uh, um, and, 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 you know, that, 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 was, that was also a coronavirus. Um, then there was another type of coronavirus, you might have heard of MERS, the MERS virus, and that, that, was a, uh, that is Middle Eastern uh, respiratory uh, um, virus, and basically that started in Saudi Arabia, and, and then it went to some Middle Eastern countries as well, um, and, but, that, but that was a coronavirus as well, and that was in 2012 when it first emerged. Uh, it was fatal. Whoever got that, most, a lot of people, most people died. And just quickly going over some of the symptoms, what are the, there's actually a lot of overlap in the, in, in the disease, and that's what makes this a very tricky and dangerous situation, especially in a pandemic. You don't know if you have the cold or you have the flu because there's a lot of overlap. For example, every, I'm sure you know, most of you probably had a cold. So you, know, you have a runny nose, you have congestion. Um, fever is unusual in a cold, though. You know? So if you, you know, you know, if, if, if you have fever, you, know, you probably have the flu or something else, another virus. You know? um, generally, you, know, like you, you might have a sore throat, maybe a cough, some sneezing. With the flu, one of the characteristic onset is that you have a sudden onset of back pain and muscle ache. That's very characteristic of the flu. It's, it's often very sudden onset. And, 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 um, and then, you know, you, you know, those of you who've had the flu, you know, you already know that you can have the, the, the body aches, the chills, the fatigue. You know, you can also have runny nose, you know. So, but the, the thing is, you don't get, you, you know, you can get high fever with the flu. You don't usually get that just with the cold. Um, the, the, and, and with children, you can have vomiting and diarrhea. Um, and the dangerous part of the flu is that it can spread to the lungs and give you viral pneumonia, okay? And, and, and so if you, if you have the flu and then you start getting short of breath, um, then you have you to be concerned that you might be developing pneumonia from the virus itself. Um, now, COVID, you know, those of you who have had COVID, you know, I'm sure you, 
uh, can you have experienced it, 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 it starts off just like the flu, actually. And, 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 and you have very much the similar symptoms. You, you may just have a runny nose. I've, I've had people coming to me, you know, saying that I just have a runny nose and you test them and they're positive for COVID, you know. So, so th like I said, there's a lot of overlap and you have to be, and, and that's why in, in a pandemic, it, it's a very tricky situation. That's why testing is so important because that's the only way sometimes you can distinguish them one from the other. Um, and just like the flu, you can have the body aches and, and, and the sore throat, the chills, um, headaches, all that stuff. There is a couple of unique symptoms which you probably have heard of in the media and all that, uh, or you may have experienced it if you've, if, you've had the, uh, the, uh, if you've had the COVID infection, and that is the loss of taste and smell. Okay? If, if you have these symptoms and you've lost your taste, and you can't smell anything, you probably have COVID, okay? Um, and, I, and I've seen that in, you know, multiple people, you know, who, who, who've come that. The dangerous symptom that, that with COVID is that when you, you know, if, if, if you have these symptoms, you know, flu, fever, and then you recover, that's good. The dangerous part is when you start getting, if you start getting short of breath, okay? That's when you start worrying and things can really go downhill and then you can go down the path where you end up in the hospital, in the ICU, and God forbid death, you know. So, 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 so these are the basic symptoms and, and, um, and the initially just the virology I spoke about earlier.